Attention, please. Give him a heater. You're now listening to Clear the Mechanism. The Robbie Rose Show. The Robbie Rose Show. Hey guys, welcome. Um, welcome to Season 6, Episode 2. Hopefully you got a chance to check out uh, the first episode of Season 6. Holy smokes, I am so sunburnt. I've been doing a lot of lessons uh, outside, and uh, where I am in Northern California, it's just been so hot. I know if if you're listening to this from from Arizona, I don't have I don't have any room to talk because I saw you all got like what 114, 115 over there. It's crazy. Um, yeah. So this podcast today is not going to be about sunburn. Today's podcast, I want to talk about terminology and verbiage, and really kind of diving into the concept of getting the most out of, you know, an athlete, because the more that I do like in-person lessons, the more that I realize how important it is to be sure that the athlete and the instructor are on the same page. And I always, as an instructor now, I'm always looking back at my development uh, you know, when I, when I was playing in, in pro ball and when I was around so many different instructors and I always kind of correlate how the best seasons that I had was with usually more of times than not was with the, uh, best, you know, pitching coach that I thought we just established a really good relationship with. Uh, and I don't know if that's intertwined because I was having success, therefore the pitching coach liked me, but, but whatever. Um, so we're going to dive into a bunch of concepts today in regards to uh, terminology and verbiage between the instructor and the athlete. We're also going to kind of get into how I see best to establish um, the most gains or how to get the most gains out of the athlete by creating a, a really good relationship with the athlete. So uh, we're going to get into all that within the episode. Won't take up too much of your time. Just want to hit on this real quick um, because I've been getting a lot of questions recently now that I've, like I said, been doing a lot of in-person lessons about that dynamic and I want to really hammer it home. But um, before we do, I want to talk about a couple different things. Uh, the first one being the content that I'm producing or publishing, would it be producing or publishing? I guess it's both. The content that I've published recently uh, would really, really encourage you to check out. There's three specific pieces of content that if you're in the realm of optimizing pitching mechanics or really taking a deeper dive into it, or even just like getting my, you know, like understanding my approach to some specific things within within the delivery, I'd encourage you to check these out. The first one would be a very simple uh, five mechanical checkpoint. Um, so five pitching mechanics checkpoint thing to 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 go off of. Uh, you know, more specifically targeted towards like youth coaches. I would say I wanted to create something that people could go to and just see a very simple baseline of okay, like there's five things to look at if we're looking at video of someone's pitching mechanics. That's pretty simple. All right, there we go. And I did a, I think the video that I broke down was Verlander and uh, Clevenger. So I'd encourage you to go to check that out. That's on the website, therobbyroshow.com. And you can just go to like the blogs under pitching instruction or even the content library under pitching and then mechanics. There's a, uh, I, I really encourage you to check that out along with another piece that I did. I really dove into this concept that I have in regards to accelerators and drivers. Again, I wanted to do some, some sort of baseline thing to kind of look at for more of the player's side, because as we know, pitching, there's, there's no one size fits all. There's no one's being put in a box. Like there's no box that exists in the pitching development industry. But I wanted to piece together something that could give a player a really good identification of where they should they should uh, or what they should start doing within their pitching delivery. Um, so I look at it as breaking down two separate types of throwers, uh, pitchers, accelerators, 
and drivers. And then I talk a little bit about like the hybrids, the Jordan Hicks, Aroldis Chapman's, Verlander's, Walker Bueller's of the world that I would consider as hybrids. But I tried to do the best that I could. And, I, and I'm going to continuously add on to this, this article because I'm doing more observate observations and self kind of studies about this because I want to get to a point where I can give a list of like throw variations or drill progressions that people can do to better identify which, which group they would, um, would, would be in. And then they can mold their pitching mechanics and what they're trying to accomplish within their delivery to that. Again, it's super baseline. Like it's, it's like the beta version, (laughs) but I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and then the last one would be the one that I just published, uh, yesterday called the velocity enhancing move. This is something I get asked a lot in regards to, Hey, what do all the hard throwers have in common? And this is something after years of observing, I'm just like, holy smokes, this is it. And it's basically a timing mechanism of hand raise arm swing in relation to anchor point, which is the front foot strike. And this, I talk about going all in on an article. I would highly encourage you to check that out as well. Again, if you're into the whole baseball pitching mechanic, like I I get it. If you don't want to watch me do a video, like, no worries, but all that can be checked out on the website, the I'll try to do the, uh, include the links to all three of those within the show notes. So whatever app you listen to this podcast on, you can just roll over to your show notes and, uh, just click the link and you'll be, you'll be right there. Um, and lastly, got a sponsor for today's episode. I have a sponsor for today's episode. I want to insert some like claps into that. I know like all the people that do the podcast that are super professional, which I am not, uh, insert claps is so cool. Uh, today's sponsor is Grapito. So I know as, as soon as I say Grapito, you're probably like, is it the, the torpedo thing that we used to throw in the pool when we were kids? Well, no, not exactly. So, If you have been following me for a while, and I commend you if you have, but I did a giveaway with Grapito, uh, I think it was last year, could have been longer, time flies, but um, you're going to find like all of the links and stuff for more information on what Grapito is, but it's, to put it simply, it's a, it's a grip strength, like arm strengthening kind of device. It's used by a ton of big league teams, coaches, physical therapists, um, it's got many uses. He sent me one again. I think it was like last year or maybe two years. I'm not even sure. Um, and it's, it's pretty dang cool. It's like a little torpedo looking thing with a ball at the end. And you have the option to like hook it to a barbell. You can do the, the best thing that I found with it was, uh, the most popular exercise, which would be rice bucket workouts. And it's pretty freaking cool. Like thinking about it. Um, so I can get you a discount. I can save you 10%. If you are interested, use code Robbie, R-O-B-B-Y at checkout. Again, I'll include the links um, to his website and all of that stuff in the in the show notes. But um, yeah, like I said, it's really cool. You can just head over to grippedo.com, G-R-I-P-E-D-O.com. His Instagram is uh, Grippedo Trainer. So be sure to check that out. But I get asked a lot and I want to do some more self kind of studies, I guess you would say on uh, grip strength and like wrist strength for spin data metrics, right? Cause there's no absolutes when it comes to, Hey, how do you increase spin? But I would say the most popular theory would be finger strength, wrist strength, grip strength, like all of those things. And I know from being a nerd that grip strength is directly correlated to longevity. I know that for no particular reason. (laughs) Nerd. But uh, yeah, thanks, Grapito, for sponsoring today's episode. Like I said, encourage you guys to check them out. Uh, Grapito.com, discount code Robbie, R-O-B-B-Y, check out. All right, guys. So now we're going to get into the episode. So we're going to be talking again, the terminology and verbiage and, and instilling, you know, a relationship as uh, the instructor and the athlete. So we're going to get into that. But first, I'm going to hit pause and then get a drink of water because I'm cotton mouth. So I'll be back in a, one second. All right. So like I said, uh, in the in the pre-roll, 
looking back at my career, the best time, whoa, the best seasons that I've had have been when I have had a really good relationship with the pitching coach who in pro ball, you probably spend the most time with not so much the manager, but, um, I've always like, I've always known that. And I've always put a ton of importance behind that because I think as an athlete, as a, as a player, you need to be comfortable to perform at your best, right? So we can sit here and talk all the live long day about how you need to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. Hoorah. Like I get it, right? Like I get it. You should, you should set your training up and, and stuff like that to practice those uncomfortable moments because more than likely uh, the not that you're going to have to perform in those moments. I get that. But at the same time, as an instructor, as a coach, my goal is to get my athletes, client, whatever, is to perform at his or her absolute best, like no matter what. And there's so much importance that I put on the relationship because I need that I need my athlete, I need my client to be completely comfortable with me day in and day out, right? So that's like, that's the foundation of where I wanted to go with this. But um, more specifically, we're going to be talking about like the terminology and verbiage as a, as a segue into, um, you know, this whole relationship dynamic, because the next piece that I see and that I've, I've been seeing more and more of late and I get it because I've been a player is you don't want to like feel embarrassed or you don't want to feel dumb as a, as an athlete or, you know, as the, as the player that's getting the instruction, um, to not know something, right. That's like, that's like a big no, no. So you're just, yes, yes. Like how many times, you know, do you, uh, have you, if you're listening to this as a player, been told something, been instructed to do something and have been asked, does that make sense? And you just say yes, because you just want to get going. Like you want to just like move on and you don't want to be like, no, that doesn't make sense. You don't want to be that guy. Right. I get it. I've been that guy, especially in group meetings, right? Like if I don't get something, I'm just going to say, oh, I get it just because I don't want to hold up the class or whatever. But here's the thing you're, you're doing a lot of harm to not only yourself, but the instructor as well. Cause the thing that I've realized doing more instruction, you know, one-on-one it's been like a test for me because every athlete interprets verbiage terminology differently. And as an instructor, if you only have one way to make your point, or you only have one way to coach, right? The, the one set of specific words that you use to coach, then you're setting yourself up for failure as well. And it's not easy. I'm not going to say it's easy. Trust me. I I get it. You got to kind of like have the, uh, and I don't even, this is where it gets funny because I don't know if it's so much like a a advanced vocabulary because trust me, I didn't go to college. I have the limited, I have the most limited, vocabulary in the league, as you can tell from being a listener of this podcast. It's not so much having like, uh, abundance, Hey, you amount of words to use at your disposal. It's more of just how can I get this point of cro- across to the athlete? And then does it click? Yes or no? No. Okay. Boom. Hot route audible. Let me try this again. Boom. Now I say like, Obviously, as athletes, 99% of the time, we're visual learners, right? So there's a huge importance of the instructor to be able to, to, to do whatever it is that you're trying to talk about, but to be able to perform the action and then back it up with, with words, (laughs) with a description is fantastic. I just think that it's, there's two sides of the coin one being the importance behind the athlete's responsibility, right? So it's your responsibility as an athlete to make sure that everything is like crystal clear and you have a direct understanding because I see this over and over again in, in one-on-one lessons that you just want to go, go, go. 
And then as soon as the next day rolls around, you've had a night to sleep, everything's forgotten. So there's a huge importance behind grasping and understanding and, you know, obviously first interpretate, interpreting, interpreted, Inter- whoa, words, man, interpreting like the information and then digesting that and then having that understanding for yourself. Because again, I don't know how you guys are as pitchers, but I'm trying to be my best pitching coach. I don't want to have to rely on constant instruction over and over again. So the more information that I can consume from other people, like for me, the better. I just see, I see a huge need from the the player side to be way more transparent. And again, that's, and this kind of is a segue into the second piece of the instructor's responsibility. You know, like, the instructor responsibility is to make sure that a you've established the relationship with the athlete to have him comfortable in any setting between the two of you, right? Because if you've have this persona of like, don't talk to me, I'm scary. I know everything. You should be scared to ask a question because you, if a question's asked, you're disagreeing, blah, blah, blah. Like if I feel like if you have that persona, cause trust me, I've had those coaches where you're like, gosh, I'm not going to ask this dude anything or else he'll freaking hurt his feelings. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like uh, the instructor needs to kind of create this environment of comfort by, Hey, ask any questions, right? Like be comfortable. Now you're helping the both of you in the sense of it's better equipping you as an instructor to be able to express or relay um, certain information in multiple ways, right? And then as an athlete, you're actually getting the most out of your time together, which that's all we can ever ask for. Now, at the end of the day, obviously we'll, we'll have to have the discussion of like, okay, dude, well, you don't want to overload, right? Too much information is bad. I've done a lot of stuff on that. So you don't want to like constantly be trying to absorb every single word <laughs> and fry the circuit system, right? But I think there's um there's a huge need for just grasping and, and comprehending everything. And again, as I mentioned, there needs to be that foundation of, of relationship first and foremost. So just to kind of break it down, I know when I talk and I don't have notes in front of me, <laughs> I can kind of go from left center to freaking third base dugout to right field bleachers. I get it. I'm sorry. I apologize. But um, just to round this out, I think if you're an athlete and you're trying to be the best athlete that you can be and you do the, you do your due diligence to be taught by somebody that you believe is capable of teaching you to get to you to the next level. Well, that was hard to say. Um, then it's your responsibility to take advantage, ask questions, curiosity gosh this is a whole nother podcast curiosity for me is like the best trait of a human being like i love people that are curious because that is going to propel so much desire to want to learn right like my mom, she's the most curious person ever. You get her on something and she's like, she's not stopping until she figures it out. So like, wow, I need to do a conversation. I need to do a podcast on that because then I could talk about like, what is motivation? Motivation is temporary. You need to be um, inspired. But that like curiosity. Oh, okay. I don't know where I was. I lost everything. Sorry, guys. Um, but then as a, as a player, it's your responsibility to to get the most out of that. Right. And, and get the most out being like, you don't want to get put into a situation in which you're constantly having to rely on an instructor. Right. And we've seen this before 
where the kid in Little League, little Timmy, throws a pitch and then looks immediately to the coach in the dugout over and over again. Was that good? Was that good? Did I do good? Okay, now what are we creating here? We're creating a robot that doesn't really know right, wrong, bad, good, optimal, suboptimal, efficient, not efficient. Like, that's not what we want, right? So I think a lot of that falls on the player, right, the athlete as well. Because you need to equip yourself to kind of understand what works, what doesn't. And that's my, oof, this is where I get super passionate because that was like my biggest detriment of my my career in in the beginning when I was 18, 19, right? So when I was that young in pro ball, I looked at all of the instruction that I was getting as gospel without ever really having the idea that oh, well, this is what I do well. This is who I am. Okay, that instruction may be good, but like it doesn't doesn't apply to me because I know who I am and I know what I do well, right? So again, that could be a whole nother podcast. And then going to the instructor, well, instruction side, right? The coach, it's the coach's responsibility. It's my responsibility as an instructor to make sure that A, the foundation is established. There's comfort. There's a relationship between the athlete and myself. So therefore he's not timid to ask questions, right? We create that environment of absolute freedom. Okay. So then it's my other responsibility to constantly challenge the athlete with, Hey, run that back to me. Does that make sense? Any questions? Hey, let's get a drink. Let's talk a little bit like little types of things like this. So we just consistently are making sure that there's room for conversation. And now I'm asking him questions to then challenge his understanding. So then when he is listening, now he has it in the back of his head that I'm going to challenge him with a question. So he puts a little bit more attention on the, uh, me talking. Cause look, man, I get it. Like I'm so ADD. I don't really like when, especially as a player, like I don't like when people talk, I just want to go, I want to play like, let's go, man. But it's important. It is, it really is. And again, this is off topic, but as an, as an athlete or sorry, as a, a coach, as an instructor, you do have to, there's a piece to this that you have to identify the player, right? About, okay, well, is this guy going to be at his best if he doesn't need, like if he, if, if he doesn't need any information, if he just needs to like sing a song and lift his leg and throw, right? The, the keep it simple, stupid type guys. Um, or is it going to be a guy that can process a little bit of information and then equip himself to be his own coach and go down that? Like there's so many different variables, but I guess that would be the foundation, right? But uh, yeah, terminology and verbiage, just because everyone's is going to be different, right? Especially in pitching mechanics or baseball in general, man. Like <laughs> there's so many things that I see on the internet or when I'm talking to like a, a, a fellow like pitching guy and we're talking the same thing, but like all of the words are different, right? Like that is crazy to me that there's so many different ways of, of teaching it in different words about say, we're talking hip rotation, hips go delivers the trunk delivers the arm where I would say segment hips to the trunk by delaying the hand, but it's the same thing. It's the dynamic of hip rotation in the, in the delivery. Right. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just wanted to talk about that because I was, that was something that's been on my mind for a good bit. All right. I'm going to get off now. That was a good, wow. Oh, went 25 minutes. I'm cotton mouth. And now, now I got to go to a lesson. How about that? Nice segue. If you are in the Northern California area, let's do a lesson. You can go to my website, 
go to services and you'll see in-person one-on-one lessons. Uh, or if you just want to do remote, remote lessons, that's fine. Do a mechanical analysis, sign up for the one-on-one remote coaching. Sure. Or not. It's okay. I'll still love you. Okay, guys, welcome uh, season six. I'm happy to be back on, happy to be talking again. And uh, yeah, that's what I got. Be sure to check out those pieces of content that I talked about in the pre-roll. And be sure to check out Grappito Trainer on um, Instagram, uh, his website. I'll link it all in the in the show notes as well. Cool, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Much love. God bless. And until next time, your boy is out. See you.